Hey y'all, my name is Yvette and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing Warrior Women and Unexpected History by Pamela Toler. This is a nonfiction book about women who were warriors throughout history. This book aims to add women back into the history of the world where they have been left out, forgotten, or ignored. From translators deliberately leaving out the parts of Genghis Khan's speeches where he talks about his daughters, to the Russian government telling women not to talk about their service after a war, to historians who bend over backwards to explain why a Viking woman buried with a bunch of weapons was not a warrior. Women's place in history when it comes to war and fighting has been underrecorded and understudied. Toldor tries to cover this subject by talking about a bunch of individual women's stories as well as trying to understand why women have been left out of history, which spoiler is generally because of misogyny. I have quite a few mixed feelings about this book. This is a subject that I'm very very interested in but my rating for this book has been hovering somewhere between a two and three stars so while this might not be the most positive book review I feel like I have a lot to say about it more than I would for a normal wrap-up so I'm doing a whole review for it. And as a heads up my problems with this book are mostly personal and petty so take this review with a grain of salt. So to start off, I actually like the way this book was structured quite a bit. It wasn't organized by time or location, but rather why these women were warriors. Like there's a section for daughters of warriors, one for warrior queens, one for mothers who picked up arms to protect their children, one for widow warriors, etc, etc. But I feel like towards the end of the novel, the author got kind of loosey-goosey with the structure to the point where I wasn't really sure how these women were being organized anymore. As for the writing style, I was not a fan. I feel like the author put a little bit too much of herself into the book. She would interject her own opinions or these little comments and at first I didn't mind but over the course of the book it just kept happening and happening and happening and I got annoyed. I get that it's frustrating that a lot of male historians are sexist but I could get that from the facts this book was putting out. It wasn't necessary to add a snide comment every time a male historian had a bad take on something. I also wanted to talk about the scope of the subject matter. This book mostly focuses on Europe, but it's trying to cover a global and timeless scale, which is ambitious. Women have always fought in wars and there have always been wars. So you're basically trying to cover all of known history. And I think you can see the strain of that in this book. The author tries to include so many stories of women and do them justice, but because there are so many, you don't get any depth with any one woman and it's mostly the highlights of their lives. Because of that, I take value in this book as it being a sort of primer into this subject. Now that I've read it, I know of the existence of a bunch of badass women and the issues they faced and if I want to delve deeper into a particular woman or time or location, I have a starting place. But on the other hand, and this is a completely petty grievance, but the author hardly covers any women from Latin America in a way that was more than just a passing reference. If I am remembering correctly, she only went into depth with one woman from Latin America and she was a spy for the Confederate Army, which is not great representation for Latinx warrior women, especially considering the rich history of the Americas and even all of the revolutions and rebellions that Latin America has gone through in recent documented history. I understand that colonization and genocide leads to poor record keeping, but that's a pretty big chunk of the world not to have more material on. If you say you're going to cover the whole world like this author does in her introduction, that means more than having one Latinx woman in your book and then calling it a day on Central and South America. So that was the first problem I had with this book and my second one is even pettier and that is that I don't like the way she talked about Cleopatra. She makes this comment about her being more than just a pretty face and I know that is such a small and insignificant detail to be bitter about but the whole thing of Cleopatra being bitter was Roman propaganda to undermine a woman who was incredibly powerful in her own right. I wasn't expecting a historian who specializes in women's and military history to make a comment like that, but from reading this book I've discovered that anything that could even be marginally misconstrued as Cleopatra slander, including the notion that she is a pretty face, is a super specific pet peeve of mine. I don't know. 
If you are at all interested in Cleopatra, I would recommend Cleopatra A Life by Stacey Skiff. Now on to my third and last problem with this book and that is how this book handles queerness. One of the big topics included in this book is women who dressed as men in order to join the army and fight. And one of the first ones she covers in this book is Nadezda Durova, who was the child of a Russian lord who ran away to become a soldier. The author goes through their whole life story using she, her pronouns for Durova, and then after she's done with that, she explains that even after leaving the military service, Durova still wore men's clothing and used masculine pronouns for himself. The author then says that she's going to refer to people as the pronouns they use for themselves in their life, which is awesome but then a second later she refers to Durova as a woman and uses the pronouns her for him and this is after she spent pages upon pages talking about his life using she her pronouns so like if you're gonna make that distinction about how you're gonna use a person's pronouns that they use for themselves why not actually use those pronouns? I think the author had good intentions and an attempt was made, but she does this again and again throughout her book. In another part, she talks about someone using he, him pronouns, but then she switches back and forth between he and him for this person and also refers to him as a woman. And in another part where she's talking again about how women dress as men to fight, she says something along the lines of, and these women lived out the rest of their lives as men. And it's just like, did they live as men or were they just men? Like either one could very well be true and maybe the author doesn't know but the fact that she describes every person in this book as a woman even if they lived as a man and used he him pronouns really rubs me the wrong way. At the risk of sounding too harsh there is something ugly about the way this book really hammers in how messed up it is when male historians deliberately leave women out of history because of their own beliefs and ideals but then we'll turn around and label someone as a woman who from what we know might have not been a woman and denying their queerness. I don't think that there is a set right way to talk about queer people in history. People in the past have had completely different and valid understandings of sexuality and gender and have used different labels for themselves so you don't want to assign someone a modern term when that word might not be correct. It can make talking about a person's queerness tricky but as a bare minimum pick how you're going to talk about someone, explain why you chose that way and then stick to it. Don't switch back and forth between he and she pronouns like this book does when you've made a commitment to do something else. Someone who is actually really good about using a person's pronouns that they actually use for themselves in history is this podcast called History is Gay. And I know this is a completely irrelevant tangent, but I really love this podcast. Every episode they talk about a different queer person or era in history. The hosts put a tremendous amount of energy behind their research and they seem genuinely excited to geek out every single episode so if you're into history of the forgotten or ignored like this book is trying to do then I would highly recommend that podcast. So to wrap up my thoughts on this book I think that it does have a lot of value in the stories that it's telling about different women throughout history but I just had too many petty grievances to truly enjoy it like I wanted to. So that's going to be it for this review. If you read this book, come talk to me about it in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.